here. All right, so finally seeing Eviscerate. So all these cards are mostly reasonable. Novice Engineer, I generally try to avoid picking it if I can, uh, just because a 1-1 is incredibly easy to deal with, and the uh, you'd much rather be... Uh, it's kind of a tempo uh, factor. Uh, if you're trying to progress your board, you generally want to be paying mana to progress your board. I don't really consider it, uh, uh, putting a 1-1 one -one on the board really progressing your board, and you generally don't even get a full card out of the 1-1, one -one, so it's really not even card advantage. Novice Eng Engineer is mostly just paying 2 mana to draw a card. I don't value that very highly in Arena, as tempo is especially important in Arena, and you really just want to... Uh, you'd really rather just play the card you drew versus play the Novice Engineer. Fan and Ice, it has more upside the more uh, spell damage you have. You are paying quite a bit of mana to deal a minimal amount of damage, so I tend to try to avoid taking these if I can. Uh, but uh, if you do have enough spell damage, it can be a really powerful card. Uh, but Eviscerate, again, we mentioned earlier, one of the reasons why we're playing Rogue, uh, one of the better removal spells in the game, we're definitely taking the Eviscerate here. All right, so the, here are some spicy ones. So we got a couple options here. Really, any of these are reasonable. Uh, the uh, the cold blood really lets you push damage. Uh, gives a minion plus two attack combo, plus four attack instead. Uh, especially with how aggressive our deck is, it, we could get in situations where we could play the cold blood on a minion, and that, and that minion could be very difficult for our opponent to deal with, and could just run away with the game. Definitely a card to consider. Uh, War Golem, we kind of mentioned very briefly earlier. 7 mana for a 7-7 seven, seven is not unreasonable. It can really help you fill in your top end. I prefer Boulder Fist Ogres if I see them uh, in situations where I can pick them, but War Golem is definitely a fine card uh, to fill in the top end. Another one of those vanilla cards that isn't uh, a little innocuous and isn't nearly as bad as a lot of people think. Scarlet Crusader, I talked about how I value Divine Shield pretty high. Uh, this is one of the ones that still is pretty solid. I like this one better than... Uh, than the, uh, the Silver Moon Guardian, just because the health's not as important on a Divine Shield minion, since the first hit is still, you're taking zero damage anyways. Uh, it does, uh, it is pretty poor against some of the, uh, against Mage, who can just shoot it twice, but they are spending four mana to try and remove it, and you usually can get a hit in too. Trades very well. Another thing to note at this point is we really need to try and fill our curve in a little bit well. I have been focusing on the two drop slot. I don't regret that at all. I think it'll really pay off once we get into some games. Uh, but we do need to be thinking about filling in the uh, bigger, the top end of our curve a little bit. Uh, I think Scarlet Crusader does that really well. I am very tempted to take the Cold Blood. Like I mentioned before, this can have a, this can you can really run away with a game with this card. But I mean, you really want it with like Argent Squires and that sort. It does it does work well with our two drops. But I think I'm going to opt for the Scarlet Crusader here, primarily for curve considerations. All right, so another uh, interesting set of cards here. Wind Fury Harpy. We don't. Uh, it does work well with Cold Blood. Uh, but well, there's no guarantee we'll get another Cold Blood, and without Cold Blood, this is a pretty poor card in general. You're essentially playing a Chill Wing Yeti with a giant red target on, target on its face for two more mana. Uh, your opponent's going to remove this as fast as humanly possible, as it can. I mean, obviously, that means it does have a lot of upside in the, its ability to do a significant amount of damage, but I find at six mana, you're generally overpaying for this card, as it's not usually not too difficult for your opponent to remove that late in the game. Part of what makes some of these other cards, like Chill and Yeti, powerful is just the fact that a 4-5 is very good at 4 mana. Uh, a 4-5 later in the game just is much more easier to remove as your opponents play much more stronger minions. So, uh, Again, we talked about Fan and Knives some. Not an unreasonable card, but I think we're going to opt for the Cult Master here. Uh, Cult Master doesn't have any special synergies with our deck, but it is one of the better card draw engines in the game. And combined with our two drops and our need for a couple more three and four drops, I think it fits our curve really well and potentially allows us to cash in our two drops uh, for cards as well uh, once we hit that mid game. So a really strong card. Synergizes really well with Paladin. Paladin's a very strong class in Arena, and their hero power works incredibly well with Cult Masters. They can make 1-1s one and trade those 1-1s, one not only for damage, but for cards as well. But we're going to take the Cult Master here. Not quite as good as it would be in a Paladin deck, but still a very solid card draw engine in our deck. 